very big hello to everyone watching this. I'm Allie B. Mac, aka Allie B. Cat. Don't touch it. Seriously, stop. That's my favorite mug. Seriously, stop. God damn it. Anyways, you are watching my top 10 tips for Divinity Original Sin 2. Let's get right into it, shall we? Number one, all races are equal, but some are more equal than others, aka elves rule. When creating your character, you can choose to play as a dwarf, an elf, a human, a lizard, or one of the race's undead counterparts. Each race has its own pros and cons, from differences in how the world around you reacts to different innate skills. While choice of race is dependent on how you personally want to roleplay this game, if you're having a hard time choosing, here's some info that might help. In the interest of pretending to be unbiased, I'll say that the other races do have some decent perks. Lizards can dig without a shovel and the undead can use their bony fingers as lockpicks. Also they can breathe in death fog, which is an insta-kill for any other race. The undead can also transform into any other race, which would make them number one, but without their mask they get attacked on sight, so we're gonna put them at a very close number two. This brings us back to the elves. They have a skill called Corpse Eater, which allows you to consume body parts in order to access the memories of the dead. Yes, it sounds gruesome, but this skill comes in handy constantly, allowing you to uncover secrets, find treasures, and solve mysteries. I'm just saying, every incarnation of SVU and shows like that would be a lot shorter if they had an elf on their team. As an added bonus, eating a body part will occasionally grant you an extra ability, which saves you from having to use or buy a skill book. So, even if you decide not to play as an elf, make sure you have one on your team. Number two, knowledge is power, AKA being a scholar is actually useful. Here's where your years of fancy book learning finally pay off. Well, your character's years of fancy book learning, to be clear. Luckily, our real life skills have absolutely no bearing whatsoever on our characters. If that was the case, my God Woken would probably still be petting dogs on a beach in Fort Joy instead of off saving or destroying the world. For indecisive people like me, it might be hard to choose just two tags, but after many, 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 many hours of playtesting different builds, it has become clear that the one that comes in handy the most often is Scholar. It allows your character to figure out many things that would have otherwise eluded them, which can drastically change the outcomes of certain quests. Number three, the Eliza Thornberry skill, AKA Pet Pal is a must. Pet Pal is practically a mandatory talent for your character, or at least one person in your party. It lets you talk to animals and bring your Eliza Thornberry dreams to life. Some might give you quests you can only receive because of this ability. Some might tell you about hidden treasures or give you advice that will greatly help you with your other quests. Honestly, talking to all of these good, good animals is almost worth the emotional trauma it puts you through from having to tell a baby bear cub that its mom has died. Gross, emotions. Let's just fast forward past all that boring stuff. No, keep fast forwarding, keep fast forwarding. Number four, crime does pay. Pretty well, actually. AKA the thief skill. You really should give your starting character one point in thievery. If you need to, you can respec later in the game, but at the very beginning, it is definitely worth it. I mean, unless you're playing as some sort of goody two-shoes, you know, the kind of character that's so good they won't even steal from the bad guys. To which I would like to say, nerd alert. <clears throat> But I won't, I won't say that. I, w I didn't say that, I won't say that. Because last time I said something like that, I was sent to RPG sensitivity training for two weeks. So instead I'll just say, that was a valid character choice. You are free to create whatever kind of character you want, no matter how annoying and boring it might seem to others. Seriously though, invest a point in thievery. It is definitely worth it. This segues very nicely into my next tip. Number five, what's yours is mine, AKA a guide to robbing your friends. There's a way to get a ton of free resurrection scrolls while you're still on the ship. At a certain point, everyone on the ship will be incapacitated and knocked down. If you weren't a total nerd and invested that point in thievery like I suggested, this is your time to shine. It's pickpocket time. Make sure you hit up everyone who's a companion option. I know stealing from your future besties might seem counterintuitive, but they won't notice you taking the very expensive resurrection scrolls. And when you recruit them later, their inventory has reset, which means you now have even more res scrolls. So basically, you just got a ton of useful and expensive items consequence free. That is if you aren't crushed by your overwhelming guilt for stealing from your blood bonded sisters and brothers. I clearly personally have no problem with it. 
Number six, radioactive Nickelodeon slime, AKA keep a barrel of ooze handy. Always carry an ooze barrel. It might seem weird to carry a 70 pound barrel full of oozing green goop around, but it's basically a toxic Swiss army knife. It has so many different uses in crafting. The ooze barrel plus an empty potion bottle gives you a healing potion for any undead allies. You can also combine it with all types of weapons, which adds poison damage and poison chance. For those of you who are more fiscally motivated, it's important to note that this actually increases a weapon's resale value, which is pretty cool. Also, none of this crafting consumes the ooze barrel, so you can keep on making poison weapons or bottles of poison or whatever you want. Number seven, Pack Rat, AKA use backpacks for everything. Is your hot bar overcrowded with all the random junk you've picked up while pickpocketing? I mean, borrowing items from magisters? Do you find yourself screaming into the sky? There has to be a better way! As your head explodes from the stress of looking through your billions of items for the one frickin' potion that you know you just saw in your hot bar? Well, look no further than your handy dandy backpack. They're stylish and easy to use. Just put your items in the bag and pop it in your hot bar. You can have a bag for your grenades. A bag for your arrows, a bag for your collection of body parts. We don't ask any questions. And you can have all this for the low, low price of some leather scraps and a rope. That's right, all you have to do is go to crafting and combine leather scraps and a rope. Don't wait, craft it now. Number eight, double major magic, AKA one skill book plus one skill book equals one super skill book. By combining two skillbooks, you can create a new super strong skillbook for stunning sorcerers. One of the skillbooks needs to be for an elemental skill, so Arrow Thirds, Geomancer, Pyrokinetic, or Hydrosophist. I am not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but just roll with it. The other skillbook needs to be one for a class skill, so Necromancer, Polymorphing, Huntsman, Scoundrel, Summoning, or Warfare. Divinity 2 is already kick-ass for letting you master multiple classes like you're the Avatar. Master of all four elements. And these awesome combo skills are a great continuation of that. Number 9. Power Naps, aka bedrolls are great for on-the-go health. I firmly believe in the restorative powers of napping, and it would seem like the creators of this game agree with me. Besides, who doesn't love a good nap? People with a healthy sleep schedule, you say? Well, grow up. Those people are myths. Welcome to the real world. Anyways, you're gonna wanna get yourself a bedroll. With a bedroll in your inventory, you can rest, healing your entire team in the process. You can rest anywhere and anytime. Well, anytime outside of battle, which makes sense. Bedrolls are everywhere, and putting one in your quick bar makes healing between fights easy breezy. For maximum convenience, put one bedroll in each companion's quick bar so you don't have to switch characters to heal your team. Number 10, the Cat Whisperer, AKA how to train your cat familiar. After you arrive in Fort Joy pretty early on, you'll probably come across a black cat who you can talk to if you have a pet pal. This bundle of adorable fluff will follow you or one of your party members around. If you manage to escape Fort Joy with your cat in tow, one of your characters will gain the Summon Cat Familiar ability, which is pretty awesome. But I, I want to give, give you, you a word, word of warning. warning. The world isn't a safe place for your black cat. Certain magisters will kill it on sight, claiming it causes bad luck. As if we needed another reason to hate these self-righteous dickheads on a power trip. I'm pretty sure I'm not alone in this, but mess with my pet, and I will smash you to tiny fucking pieces. I will then, of course, uh, reload to a save where my pet is still alive, even if it was two hours ago, and kill you again while my pet watches. That's a perfectly normal and healthy reaction to the death of a video game pet, right? And those were my top 10 tips for Divinity Original Sin 2. Hopefully some of that was actually helpful. Let me know in the comments section. Also, let me know if you have any tips that I didn't cover that you want to share. And don't forget to comment below with ideas for AKA intros and I might use yours in a future video. Thank you to John Warren who submitted the idea I used for this one. I'm here to try to convince you that you should hit that like button and if you want to see more content like this to hit that subscribe button. I hope my argument is persuasive. If you want to avoid any more more catastrophes like me breaking every single cup in your house, you really should do what I said. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go meow at a door until someone lets me out, and then as soon as I'm out, meow until they let me back in. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm gonna have the next video out very, very soon, so I will see you then.